All right. Welcome to GUI and Neural Browsers for 25th of, oh gosh, what is it, August 2020. Um, we got lots of folks today. Hi to all uh, the usuals and the new guys. Um, I'll start with uh, the agenda and maybe like post um, it once again on our uh, chat. And and I'll start with uh, the first one. Um, and maybe share my screen will be a bit faster. Mm. All right. So um, the first item is a quick announcement that IPFS and um, IPNS URIs are now, now uh, safe listed to be used in register protocol handler, AP, web API in Chromium. And that means, um, that means two things. One is that you are now able to register uh, redirect based protocol handler for uh, IPFS or IPNS and redirect that uh, URI to URL of your choice. And uh, along with IPFS and IPNS, a bunch of uh, DWeb protocols are there. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's a part of uh, our work that we've started uh, doing with Igalia. Um, just like Dietrich mentioned, um, this is work uh, instigated and sponsored by IPFS team um, at Protocol Labs. And we are very happy with uh, our collaboration with Igalia uh, that uh, produced uh, this uh, really cool patch which landed in Chromium. Um, it's a part of a longer work for having um, a full protocol handler for browser extension uh, where we will don't just redirect, you are able to return a byte array. Um, but, uh, it's a first very important step to have a support for those URIs without web plus prefix. Um, so the context here is that not every name can be a protocol uh, handler. Um, you can, you, there's like a safe list of names that you can use without a prefix uh, and everything else requires web plus prefix. And that was a problem because web plus IPFS, uh, was a thing separately from IPFS uh, colon slash slash. So now uh, the need for the prefix is gone. Um, so that's cool. And we are in the Chromium now. Um, the second announcement is also from me. So that's a, just a quick PSA that um, a new version 005 uh, of IPFS pinning service API landed. It's not it's mostly a cleanup and uh, upgrade uh, on naming. We um, renamed some fields to uh, ensure they don't have the same name in request and response. Uh, it's now much easier to reason about them. Uh, we've got upgraded the docs. There's more uh, visuals and uh, we got a new field uh, in the pin object. Next called name. So you can, it's a top level field where you can assign a human readable name and then you can, can filter your uh, pins by partially matching uh, that string. Um, all the providers are now uh, under origins and delegates um, uh, arrays and additional metadata for pin status is now called info. Um, full list of changes can be found in our GitHub repo on releases page. Um, I believe that's more, more or less uh, all the changes. Uh, so this, we don't expect uh, this API to change much. Uh, we probably will promote it to 1.0. Uh, people already started implementing it. Uh, so I just encourage everyone to uh, familiarize yourself with the API if you are interested in it. 
uh, from the client or server perspective, we know officially and in, in officially that people are already started implementing clients and servers of this API. So expect uh, interesting updates in the following weeks. Um, I think that's uh, two updates on my end. Uh, Jessica, do you want to briefly mention the PR on the directory listing landing in Go IPFS? Yeah, this is this is exciting because it's been a long time in coming and it's also the result of a bounty led effort uh, from an external contributor, Kevin Neaton, who did a great job. Um, I do not have a local instance of it lo loaded, so I'm afraid I cannot actually show you what this um, looks like. But this does give, um, in any of our standard IPFS directory pages, just the, the regular directory pages, there's now, there will now be a column for the CID. Um, there will also, in the header of each of those pages, have information about the directory's size, the one that you're viewing. And then also, when you're in a subdirectory, all of the path components listed in that header will be links, so you can move up and down the chain with ease. Uh, this is one of these, and it also includes a couple of miscellaneous fixes uh, for, um, uh, responsiveness that were in an earlier uh, an earlier set of changes to directory index HTML that we just didn't get in because they were so small. Um, so and and so just other optimizations as desired. Um, this is one of those things that sort of turned into a massive rabbit hole in terms of how we ended up like actually getting it done. The work um, sounded really simple and then sort of turned into this endless pile of things. So. Um, Lots of kudos to everybody who, who dug in to, to do something that was small, but was actually a really substantial user-facing improvement. Um, I also added, there's a note there, CLI tutor mode, um, nearly ready to ship. Um, this was another contributor, community contributor led effort, but um, in the next version, I guess 2.11, hopefully, uh, we will have the option in the prefs to turn on and off CLI tutor mode, which will give you a little copy code icon near things that are that map easily from um, IPFS desktop and web UI into the command line for folks who started. Ah, thank you, Lytle. Folks who started, um, and, and these, these screenshots are a little bit outdated, the icon change and a few other things in the meantime, but you, you'll see little, little teases. You click on those, they'll bring up a modal with the thing that you copy-paste into your terminal to do the thing in the CLI. So should be good for new users um, as an onboarding improvement and super excited that it ended up as something that was led by a contributor, a community member. It's super, super, super cool because uh, um, in general, our GUI applications were like are not aiming to be the the, the end user product with like original meaning of that. It's mostly uh, a demonstration, like visual visualization of IP, what IPFS can do, and uh, a vessel for learning by exploring. And I feel this is a great example of uh, how we can do that because from the graphical interface, you can learn how to do the same thing in the command line, which is super cool. Um, next one is, is there anything we need to discuss for uh, the next uh, release of web UI? Let me quickly maybe share uh, that milestone. Um, I've added one thing today. Um, <laughs> to the pile of <laughs> 2.11, but I think it's be it's better to mer like merge, make a decision to merge or not. But I'd say merge uh, sooner than later, and it's this refactor of components by uh, Iraqli. It does not like actually change anything. It's just a refactor that uh, clean up stuff and make it easier for people to contribute. I I think, uh, but if we want to. Uh, uh, to accept that change, I do that with and ship it with 2.11 mostly because it uh, changes the way um, events are um, created. Uh, and we have this opt in um, mechanism for um, metrics. 
and we use Cantly service for that. So uh, if there, it's better if there's uh, some regression regarding the way we uh, gather metrics of how users interact with uh, application, it's better to notice it sooner than later. And uh, I'd like to notice that before we integrate pinning services. <laughs> is a uh, quick question, is this going to introduce any conflicts with our giant pinning services branch? Yeah, so that's a, that, that's, that's a good question. I've put it uh, in this milestone mostly so that we don't miss it and we don't like make a decision to merge it without considering exactly that uh, side effect. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, would be great to uh, catch either uh, Hack or Oli if they're available because uh, they are probably the most familiar with all the assumptions done when Countly was introduced. Um, Rafael, if you could block some time this week and take a look at this from uh, your perspective, uh, from the perspective of changes that you're doing for pinning services, uh, that would also be useful. Uh, I'd say we should make a decision uh, sooner than later, because uh, it's a pretty big refactor. It's like a big refactor. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Ollie took care of all of that initial Countly integration, just her another conversation that's been going on side channel <laughs> recently. <laughs> I think that may have all been Ollie's original work for what that's worth. Yeah, I'm I'm not yeah, I was like away and stuff. I'm just like worrying that we'll miss it. So uh yeah. that's why I've included it here. Uh feel free to like descope it from this release if it does not make sense. Um apart from that, I think um, there are no new things. The, um, the last open question on tutor mode with the translations, um, I kicked that back your way because I think there's actually a really easy fix for that. <laughs> I, I RTF'd him. Um, so, so hopefully, hopefully if I understand this correctly, it, it should neatly take care of that problem. So that I think we could be, we could be done with. Okay, I, I'll take a look after. Yeah, after you, can, you, can explicitly, you can explicitly reference additional namespaces yeah. rather than fallbacks. Yeah, but I would have to take a look at this asynchronously after the call because my yeah. past experience was that it works, but then when you clean up the, all the files from those keys, the actual fallback turns out to not work. So it may be a bug that was fixed since the last time I worked with uh, i18next. Uh, yep. i18next is the library we use for localization in WebUI. Yeah, so, I did. Uh, I made two commits. They seem to work just fine. Uh, it does sort of open up future questions because there are a lot of other duplicate keys in there, and then um, and and just you know how far we want to take that, and that's that's for separate. That's for a separate project. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, works, I, think should, it's great. I think this should take care of it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's, uh, let's take that. Oh gosh. Um, do we have any question marks or things we want to discuss for uh, the other front? Um, I know, uh, Rafael, you've been working on um, cleaning up the all the issues related to uh, people connecting to remote node. Uh, yeah, regarding that one, um, let me just check real quick. I just had it open here. Um, the merge request is ready for review. I think you can see it now, Lyle. Um, I just added just a few asked for. And um, I just need to fix something that you comment on recently. I, apparently, I didn't get the notification on. But when I do that, I'll, I'll ask for your review again and you can check it out. Just okay. finishing cleaning up some breadcrumb stuff and uh, mm -hmm. um, test CI on uh, the add connections animation as well. And then cool. I'll, I'll move to that uh, pull request again. Cool. Um, yeah, the context here is that um, we don't want to invest too much time because most of people want will just lose a local node, be that one provided by IPFS desktop or locally running IPFS. But there's a set of users who want uh, to connect to remote IP, which by remote we mean even mean the 
IP in a IP or a domain in a local network. And it's hard to tell when it's a local network or a remote one because people connect over VPN. There's like a long tail of uh, the ways people use web UI to connect to their nodes. And we figured out uh, the way to like accommodate most of users. So they, it, it just works. Um, so if it's possible, uh, use the gateway from the nodes config. If not, just fall back to the public gateway. Uh, either user does not notice that or they have IPFS companion and companion will take care of redirecting that to the proper gateway of user's choice. Um, and I think that's like the, the line in the sand where we, when we uh, balance the, <laughs> the convenience of all the users with like the time we can spend to uh, account for every uh, use case at this, at this stage. Um, so that's, we'll probably close a bunch of those. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, supporting API with, uh, when you enter, instead of multi-other, when you enter URI with a basic auth, with user and a password. Um, I know that it was a problem for IPFS companion in the past and it may got changed with uh, the change to the latest JS IPFS. So that's probably something we'll have to uh, add tests for. I don't think we have uh, like end-to-end -end tests for this. Um, so it's possible we have an regression there, but that's like my only note for uh, Web UI uh, 2.11. The rest looks fine, I think. Mm -mm -mm. All right, folks. Uh, I think we we've uh, beat that 2.11 to the death. We, are we happy with it? I think so. <laughs> I think we're fine. We're fine. Um, this is fine. This is 2.11 fine. has like three or four pull requests that could potentially break Web UI big time at the same time. This, this is gonna be fine. Fun. This is fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's just uh, the trick is to merge them in the proper order. <laughs> True. <laughs> Say a little prayer between each merge. Uh, just like a small, <laughs> small here, like animal sacrifice or something. <laughs> between. All right. Um, <laughs> on the, uh, a different topic, uh, we'll start. We'll st start an experiment with uh, grooming issues every week. We want to do that on this call because people will, would fall asleep even yeah. more, uh, but uh, it, we will be uh, blocking time each week to triage issues uh, on um, GUI related um, and web related, um, uh, browser, browser related uh, repos and try to uh, ensure nothing is hanging without uh, sort of re uh, reply or at least a proper triage. Um, I don't think we have any highlights uh, this week. Uh, I hope to uh, finish IPFS Companion uh, refactor and uh, shipping that to beta, but that did not happen. Uh, hopefully this week. Um, the, uh, do we just want to punt on, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we've been working on um, active peers indicators uh, in companion and possibly in desktop and I'd sort of started doing some of that work. Do we just want to hold off on continuing on that until you're done with the refactor? Uh, I'd say I, I won't uh, even look at that until I finish this refactor. Cool. Uh, okay. And I, I would uh, make a beta release with refactor and then probably uh, go to that into the indicator stuff and make okay. a separate beta with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because like the, pushing the refactor is pretty important because uh, um, we some users use embedded JS IPFS in a browser, and that embedded JS IPFS is in a super old version right now in Companion, and it will soon lose ability to connect to other peers because Sakio is deprecated. So that the, the time window for making that uh, release is shrinking. So that's like my priority. And then we'll, uh, we'll do the other stuff. Um, yep. Uh, I think that's it on the agenda. Any, any topics you want to bring up? Mm. Mm. 
once, twice. That was a short one. Uh, see, this is what happens when Heracles is not around. Uh, all right, I think, we, I think we're good with uh, half an hour this week. Um, let's, uh, let's plan for a longer one in two weeks. We'll this time we'll probably have uh, both releases and some interesting announcements uh, that close up uh, topics we've mentioned this week. So I will start recording. I started recording, so now I will st stop it. So I will stop recording now and we can get our half an hour back. See you in two weeks. Thank you, everyone. See you.